Are swollen knees slowing you down and putting a damper on your day? You're not alone. Knee swelling can be a frustrating and very painful experience, but understanding its causes and knowing how to manage it effectively can make all the difference. Join us in this informational video as we dive into the world of knee swelling, uncover its root causes, explore treatment options, and empower you with the knowledge to reclaim mobility and comfort in your everyday life. Say goodbye to swollen knees and hello to a mobilized and energized future. What causes knee swelling in the first place? We can talk about very general terms of traumatic and non-traumatic. Traumatic would be you fell onto the knee, there's some damage to the tissue, the body puts down swelling in the area kind of to cushion it. If you did not fall, it could have been a twisting motion or it could be that you've done something like a half marathon or you got out and did some major activity hiking and after that hiking the knee is swollen. That again is the body saying there's something going on here. I'm going to rush a bunch of fluids to the area to kind of add and cushion it. There could have been a tear in the meniscus into the area of the knee right here. Remember the meniscus are the cushioning parts of cartilage of the knee. There could be a tear to the collateral ligaments. There could be some damage to the patellar tendon itself. Particularly if you notice a deformity of the knee, such as the kneecap is off to one side versus the other. If you've got a big bulging area, if you've got redness, and if it is hot to the touch, there could be a reason to go into the urgent care or to see your primary care physician sooner rather than later. You could have had a bee sting, a bug bite, a thorn in the knee. That can cause some swelling as well. So if you notice anything like a stinger or a thorn or in Arizona, you notice a cactus spine, then removing that is the important thing. So these are traumatic reasons for swelling of the knee. A non-traumatic reason for swelling of the knee is probably arthritis. It can be both osteoarthritis, which is the wear and tear arthritis, or it can be gout, which is a process where a joint is typically affected. Typically we talk about in the feet, but the knees are absolute targets or rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. Other autoimmune diseases that can cause joint swelling are lupus or psoriatic arthritis. You would probably know that you have these processes, but just know that occasionally the knees can be the targets of swelling. Typically it's more widespread. It's more likely to be both knees at the same time. It may be that the whole body, the whole system, everything just feels achy and swollen. In that case, you would speak with the physician that's managing your autoimmune disease. When we have swelling of the knee, we want to know how to treat it. So acutely, you can do the RICE method, the rest ice compression elevation. Because it's acutely swollen, we do want to get off of that knee. You can elevate the level, or excuse me, the knee above the level of the heart. That allows the fluid to drain with the lymphatic system and the circulation can help remove some of that inflammation. Putting ice on the area will also reduce the blood flow to the area and help the capillaries then remove some of that fluid and get it back into that lymphatic circulation. Compression, using a compression wrap, also known as an ACE wrap or a special bandage, like a compression bandage, a compression sleeve, a formal knee brace, as long as it's fit appropriately, not too tight, can help compress the area and allow that fluid to be absorbed. Other things that can be done are topicals to the area. There are topical anti-inflammatories that contain a non-steroidal such as the diclofenac gels or the aspirin gels. There can also be some home remedies that can be applied to the area. The home remedies include sitting in an Epsom salt bath with warm water. The Epsom salt contains magnesium, which helps with anti-inflammatory. Other natural anti-inflammatories that can be applied in a poultice in a topical fashion would be turmeric or ginger. Applied in a paste, put on the knee, wrapped into the 
area left on for 15 to 20 minutes. So the magic numbers here and anything that you apply topically to your knee, whether that be ice, whether that be sitting in the Epsom salt bath, whether that be placing a, a turmeric poultice or a ginger poultice would be 15 to 20 minutes, then removing it and giving their time between that. You can do this several times a day. Again, this is if it's in an acute situation. If you're getting swelling in your knee after every workout, it's probably due to the fact that you've got some arthritis. We've moved to a, a condition where we've got less cartilage to protect. So with every motion, we're getting more of that compression, more of this squishing here and pounding and pounding and pounding. And it can certainly be on one side more than the other side. Typically, degeneration occurs more often on the medial or inside. So we can get that pounding from walking or going to the gym or hiking or golfing, playing pickleball. And the body then says, this is too much. We've done a little bit too much. I'm gonna put some inflammation around the area and let you know that there's something going on. That then may guide you to reach out to your sports medicine physician, your primary care physician, your pain management physician, and ask them what kind of options you have. Some options traditionally are going to physical therapy to strengthen the muscles around the knee, to stabilize the knee, to learn better techniques, make sure that your gait is in alignment if it's only one knee versus the other, that you have addressed the fact after you've gotten maybe a hip replacement, an ankle replacement, or you've replaced the other knee, that the this knee is now swelling. Is there a leg length discrepancy? Is there something that allows you now to have your gait where it's just a little bit off? Because even a few millimeters can make a difference. So all this can be discovered once you visit somebody and talk about why you're having knee swelling, the diagnostic process can occur with a good history, a good physical exam, maybe some imaging. In the office, we use a live ultrasound that we can then do some dynamic testing of the knee to see if we have uh, where the swelling is, the amount of the swelling, and is it due to a tear. For example, in a meniscus, a medial collateral ligament, a tear in the patellar tendon, the joint effusion or amount of swelling can potentially be aspirated or pulled off. But know that this is just a temporizing measure that if the original reason for having that swelling is not fixed, then that's just going to reaccumulate. But in the short term, it can provide some amazing relief. Oftentimes we'll send off a sample of that just to have it analyzed and make sure it's not something like we talked about before, like gout or that there's not an infection going on, in which case, if there's an infection that needs to be treated, if it's gout, then you need to have your gout well managed. These are some causes of swelling of the knee, some home remedies, and some other reasons that you may wanna seek out care for somebody that specifically works with knees, works with joints, works with athletes such as you who want to get back into your activities. You want to mobilize, you want to energize. If you'd like to learn more about this, please subscribe, please like and comment below. Also visit kneeboostnow.com to learn even more about how to get out of pain and to get back into your life. If you have knee pain and would like to learn more, I have a worksheet called five things to do now to reduce your knee pain within a week. Go to www.kneeboostnow.com to download it for free. I'd love to hear from you, so please like, subscribe, and comment below so I can help you get out of your knee pain.